Welcome to Bothering the Band. My name is Ryan Bynack. With me, as always, is the general of auto insurance and this podcast, Abigail Ann Levy. Man, we got a great, great show today. We have Luke Bentham from The Dirty Nil, which is a raucous rock and roll band from Canada. I first heard them when I first moved to Florida. I got a Toyota, a Toyota Corolla. And it came with Sirius satellite radio and all the stations sucked aside from the Canadian stations. And I was rocking out to the dirty new. And now we got him. Hey guys. Hello. What's going on, man? Not much about you. Doing quite well. My name is Ryan. This is Abby. Luke, thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, I love your shirt right off the bat. No, thank you very much. Uh, local uh, local Hamilton designer. Very cool. It's very a cool. portrait of the artist as a young dog. I love it. I was just listening to his uh, Austin City Limits album. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, that from the, is that from the early 90s? I think so. I don't know the year, but I, I, it just popped up. And I was, and I did a deep dive, top to bottom. Hell yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Bothering the Band. Uh, Luke is wearing a Towns Van Zant shirt. It's very cool. Um, so yeah, thank you for doing this. I don't know My pleasure. If, if, you, if you listen, but we ask our favorite musicians very stupid questions. So, and we pride ourselves on being a little different. And then I also was saying to Abby, when I moved to Florida like six years ago, and I bought a, or I got leased a car, and it came with Sirius Radio, and the only good stations were the Canadian stations, and that's how I discovered your band. Hell yeah! So, no, and this is not hyperbole. No, not blowing smoke up your ass. That's legit. Like so, so. Uh, thank you. Yeah, for making good music that I listen to in my Corolla. Well, you know, <laughs> shout out to that Corolla, Ryan. And shout out to Sirius XM. It was the Verge. That was the name of the radio station. That yeah, uh, the Verge has been good to us. Yeah, it's. Uh, I love. I mean, like it's. It's one of the. We've done a lot of stuff like going for terrestrial radio which is kind of like your local free radio mm -hmm. stations and that's just a completely separate thing from satellite radio but satellite radio is great because you know they they'll they're not conservative in terms of what they'll play like they'll play nasty stuff and you know aggressive stuff and stuff with swearing and it doesn't matter and uh uh you know on the other side terrestrial radio terrestrial radio that is um they're you know because it's it's a shrinking thing they you know it it they they don't play the same kind of stuff it's it's much more mandated and um but yeah serious xm anyway shout out to serious much love i had to it was a it was a necessity because if you put on the terrestrial radio uh it was either 90s pop or current like pop music which runs the gamut and either the 90s i don't mind but the current stuff at the time i was like i don't i have no idea what this is so yeah i went for yeah. and i have a friend of mine shout out to adam santiago who always is like your favorite ba bands are all canadian and i'm like sorry man all the good bands are coming out of canada dude well we got a, we got a pretty good scene up here right now you do we we've had so many canadian bands on this uh program so let's start off how are you where are you uh i'm in beautiful hamilton ontario the sun mm -hmm. is pink or sorry the, the sky is pink because the sun is setting and uh i how am i i'm doing very well i'm really i'm uh super happy life's good cool man and how do you describe the music you make you personally how do you describe it um well, when I was a kid, my parent, my dad listened to a lot of outlaw country as, you know, throwback to the yeah. first part of our conversation. Yeah. And my mom listened to a lot of like women in songs like uh, like Sarah McLaughlin and uh, Dido and all that stuff. So I think musically I'm right in the middle. Oh, that's that's wonderful. What a great spectrum. When's the last time you heard Dido, Abby? Jeez Louise. You know, Maybe. it lives lives rent free in my mind. So. Here's a, this is a good question for future future guests. Name two Dido songs. 
impossible. But they're all going to say Eminem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eminem and the and the version that doesn't feature Eminem. Yeah, yeah. What's count? the name of that song? Do we know? I don't know. I, this is not like a like a smart ass thing. <laughs> I can sing the lyrics. Things don't come. And fun. I don't actually know the lyrics. But da, 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 da. Uh, I used to think. Does she say "Get out of Canada" when she says that line? Maybe. You know, that's I used to I- think that. When I think about songs from like my childhood, like I just remember the melodies and the phonetic sounds of the vocals, not necessarily what they were saying. I mean, sometimes I'll, I think I know the words and now I look them up and they're completely different from what I thought. But Abby uh, has something right now. I know the name of the song. What is it? Spit it out. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. And I want to thank you for giving me the best day of my life. Okay, now it unlocked the whole thing for me. I would have and never then she wants to be with you. <laughs> would have never got that. Oh. Luke, do you have any pets? Um, well, I have joint custody with my parents over a uh, a wily half cattle dog, half everything else uh, mixed dog that uh, I love very dearly. We kind of, I mean, he lives with my folks, but we we take him at our place for uh, you know uh, for little vacations, and he has a great time here. So joint custody. And what what's the dog's name? His name is Leo, but he has many other names. Um, cute little nicknames yeah uh porky uh okay. yeah uh leonardo de stinky uh <laughs> you know it goes on and on and on that's good i feel like if you don't have at least five nicknames for your dog you're just not a good dog owner yeah you're a bad dog parent if you're, yeah. if you're less than five i'd say mm-hmm. It's a sign of affection. I think like for good friends and, and relatives too, if you have yes. all those things too. <laughs> this, this is a, per, uh, a question I'm curious about. It's my favorite question and it comes from real life. So when you're opening, let's say, but you're opening butter for the first time and it has the plastic film on it. Do you peel the whole thing off and throw that plastic film away or you peel it just a little bit and leave it on? I peel the whole thing off and I lick it and then I throw it out. Yes. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And it can, that question comes from me going to someone's house and I'm like, like, why, why do you save this little plastic thing on, on your butter? Do you do it, Abby? You definitely do it. I throw it away. Yeah. Um, but there, it's either sour cream. I think it's sour cream. When you peel it off underneath, it says it. It's like, I'm not supposed to stay here. Throw me away. It's like something silly. Oh, wow. That's fun marketing. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you keep that plastic film, like, you know, on as a part of the yogurt container or whatever it is that you should go yeah. on some kind of watch list. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what the lid is for, right? Yeah, so. that's, yeah, yeah. It's superfluous. We don't need it. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, not, mm-hmm. it's not necessary. In fact, it's probably helps to cultivate bacteria. You should probably get rid of it. Wow. For science. D- diving, d- diving deep. I it's would bet theory. all of our parents leave it on. I feel like it's a generational thing. Could be. Yeah. Mm-mm. From a, a time of scarcity. I don't know. We we never throw it this away. Past. <laughs> Deb throws it away, but I will yeah. say that every time I visit her house, I do have to throw away probably like 15 condiment bottles too. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they're all That's down what birds the... do. Yeah, and they just like save them, and ten of them expired years ago, mm. and you don't know what's happening. Condiment. <laughs> That's Deb's problem. Yeah. Sorry, mom. Um. Okay. I'm gonna try to phrase this question. What What's your favorite thing that America has stolen from Canada? Um. Examples being like, okay, uh, musicians, food. Um. Well, I guess, I, I guess I would have to go with like Neil Young or something. Yeah. Like, most people, when I tell them he's Canadian, they're like, "What?" I'm like, "Yeah." I mean, Neil Young's one for sure. Um, you know, you guys. Uh, I, I would have said before, like you guys can have Bieber, but like Bieber's been dropping some some great products at uh, in collaboration with uh, Tim Hortons. So my uh, 
my estimation of Jay Beebs has been rehabilitated somewhat by uh, by his collaboration with the, the good folks at Tim Hortons. Excellent Tim bits. Really like them. <laughs> there, there's something we said about so many great Americans are Canadian, like Gosling, Reynolds, Neil Young, you know, uh, Shania Twain, Celine Dion. Okay. Yeah, we could keep going here. Celine Dion, yeah. Um, Isn't Joni Michael, Mitchell from like Saskatchewan or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, who else you got? Eugene Levy. Yeah, I mean all those Second City like uh, guys. Mike Myers. Mike Myers, John Candy. Yeah. Um, Lord Michaels is Canadian. Kids in yeah. the Hall. Norm Macdonald. Rest yeah, Norm Macdonald. Yeah. I mean, the comedians are endless. But I feel like if you make a bunch of bank in the States, like they, they all just go live in LA, which is like, I get it. Like I used to not like LA also. Now I, I really like it the older I get. And uh, it's kind of like, man, like winter up here is pretty intense. Like, and it's yeah. just, it's just long. Like it's really long. And if you have had the experience of being in LA in February, and it's hot and sunny. Uh, it's pretty hard to go back to Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, and face the blizzard there. Uh, Abby's in Wyoming, so she feels your pain. She just I'm, started getting summer. I did. We're in like the coldest part of the country too, so it's essentially my winters are very similar to what you experience. They're eight months long. It never ends. It's it negative degrees for like 30 days you don't see the sun so i uh we did a live show in la in may and so we still weren't even getting our spring yet so i know exactly what you mean about like visiting it's hot and sunny and i came back here and it snowed and i was just like i quit you get your park out again yeah yep. that's the thing about i'm sure it sounds the same out in wyoming i mean we've driven through there but only in like the, the middle of summer and stuff uh mm -hmm. I like in Canada, you can't really safely put your parka away until like basically June now. Yeah. yeah. Same here. Yeah. I have the opposite where I, I prefer LA too, but it's like, because there's, you have the heat without the humidity. I'm in Florida yeah. and it is disgusting. Like 11 months out of the year, it's disgusting. So I would prefer the no, the heat, no humidity of the West Coast. So are we all just gonna move to LA together? Is that yeah, yeah, yeah? Is that what we're? Is this yeah. is this the kind of entrance conversation of us getting a getting a house? Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say we should get an apartment together. Bring the dog uh, while you're on while you're on tour. We'll watch the dog. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm no, liking it'll it. Work, <laughs> it'll work itself out. I work from home, uh, so it, it's it's perfect. I am we very tidy. I take the plastic. <laughs> I take the plastic off those tubs. Good. Of anything. That was my next question. Yeah, right off. Just want to make sure. Right when I get home, I'm putting away the groceries. I open them. I throw those away. I don't even use them yet. I'm just kidding. that's you know. It's I just want to make sure we're, we're compatible in that way. You know, that's that's important. Have you ever worn a Canadian tuxedo? Yes. Really? So denim on denim on the denim. Yeah, we're going to the Junos this year, which is like our Tim Hortons version of uh, of the Grammys. Um, but uh, we wore, or the whole band wore matching uh, Canadian tuxedos. And um, all these like people were rolling up in like Escalades and, you know, black tinted windows. And we, we rolled up in a in a Toyota Corolla. We spilled out of this Toyota Corolla in a bunch in uh in canadian tuxedos and oh they have fringe there's mm -hmm. fringe yeah you found it we got to use that for like one of the promo posts yeah so this episode are... brought to you by toyota corollas by the way yes old ones <laughs> yeah um but we had our friend uh, uh named uh nabby sue birch uh customize them for us she's got a she's got a uh a vintage store in Hamilton here called Daddy's Plastic. Shout out to Nabby. Uh, and uh, she painted and, and customized these things for us. And yeah, it made quite the impact. It was, uh, it was a good time. You said Daddy's Plastic? Yes. Cool. Yeah, it looks like it says something. Yeah, it says fuck art on. Oh, good. Um, I love it. Yeah. So 
speaking of that, this is this is a further down on on my list here, but I just have to say this is not a question from from the name to the cover and everything you went through. And of course, the the music, uh, Fuck Art is, a, in my opinion, a perfect album. And my opinion Thanks. doesn't matter much, but um, I listen to it when I ride my bike. It's a perfect, like, you know, motivator, inspiration, write some poems while I'm, I'm doing it. Love that fucking album. I'm glad you dig. Uh, I'm, I that love makes it. Me happy. Yeah, dude. Um, what's next? How long do you wear jeans between washings? We're still on denim um and also on the road versus at home might be different well on the road i pretty much don't wash them to be honest with you and uh it's uh i kind of just like you know i've i i used to wear like you know nicer quality jeans like all denim ones and now now i just wear 511s and i just you know buy a few pairs at a time and I like this, this, uh, these are five elevens. They're completely covered in stains from me painting and just being sloppy. And, you know, at some point I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna chuck them. As soon as like the first hole happens, it's, it's, it's over, you know, I just get back on, get it, get, I, I have kind of a stack of them in my closet and I just pull, pull another pair out. I'm not really much of like a, a fashion guy, I would say in terms of my my civilian life. Uh, when we uh, when we get on stage, I certainly uh, wear some um, some more uh, elaborate threads. But when I'm walking around, it's just uh, it's pretty much t-shirt and jeans uh, all day, every day. This is a perfect segue. First of all, I'm a 502 guy. Just got some new pairs. Very happy. Right on. I think I'm uh, 511. 511, I think it's the classic one. I, I got bigger thighs, so I need, I need to look. <laughs> <laughs> well, while she looks, where's this question at? Um, I was going to ask, do you have a favorite shirt? I know you wear like specific shirts on stage. Well, I'd say all, all of the, the custom shirts I've had made are, are pretty uh, close to my heart. And honestly, any of the ones that, that I've pretty much ever worn, I guess, throughout our career, which... I think I started wearing them like basically 11, 11 years ago, like started wearing them basically exclusively on stage. So I have like a whole closet of like retired uh, star shirts um, that. Um, where do you get, where do you get these? Well, it's, it's, so it started when we were in, it was, it was our second ever tour. We were 20 and we went out to, um, uh, the east coast of Canada. We stopped in Montreal, and we went to this place where everything, all the clothing in the store was ten bucks. It was all new clothing too. It wasn't like uh, you. It wasn't like a you know thrift store or something. But they had this insane like white star shirt with a white kind of you know uh, button up short sleeve shirt with a collar. And it had blue and red stars all over it. It was loudest, dumbest looking shirt I've ever seen in my life. It's so, it just looks like a clown shirt. And uh, my friends, like we laughed at it. My, my friend who was, was like, if you wear that, I'll buy it for you. I'll put up 10 bucks for you to wear that shirt. And I wore it. I immediately felt like a superpower of like, I'm an asshole and this is great. And uh, I feel like I can walk through brick walls and, I just, I just, I immediately felt this kind of like, I don't know, just like a, it felt different and it felt good. And uh, so once I kind of went through that one, I, I had to basically start sourcing other ones. And I, I wore the shit out of that one. Like it's, it's amazing that it didn't fall apart. And then other people were like, Hey, check this out. Levi's makes one. And so I bought a few of those. And then I got to the end of the star shirt rainbow and I'm like, damn, like I can't really find anything that's like high quality, like I'm used to. And, uh, I can't find anything. So then I contacted a, this lady named, uh, named Wendy, uh, who's got a company called Canary Naturals. And she custom made me a star shirt and she had done stuff for this band called the Sadies. Oh and, yeah, I know that. Uh, yeah, she's she's a badass. I mean, she's like an old school chain stitch, like country and western shirt, uh, uh, tailor, I guess, or uh, crap sh shirt maker. I'm not exactly what you, 
what term you'd use, but um, you know, we just drew up some crazy elaborate plans with like studs and you know, kind of crossover thrash metal country shirts, basically. And uh, we we came up with some awesome stuff together. Okay, Abby, what kind of pants? Oh, uh, they're Seven Eleven, so maybe that's like they're from Seven Eleven. Wow. Yes. I didn't know they sold pants. Maybe that's the lady. Got it all. Five, I think yeah, maybe ladies, ladies are seven, like seven series. Um, Luke, do you have a favorite shirt at home? Favorite home shirt, citizen um, shirt. I don't know. It, yeah. Civilian shirt. Civilian shirt. Um, yes, uh, I would say. Uh, um, I have this shirt from my dad. Like that, I, I I think I just took it out of my dad's closet, and I he's got to have had it since like the '80s, and it's this like giant black shirt uh that's really kind of like worn thin but it's still completely uh opaque but it's got almost like a silk like quality because it's so light now and it has tree frogs like like there's one on the back and they kind of go around the shirt it's uh it's a great shirt very very comfortable uh cool looking shirt at this point <laughs> I just realized that both you and Abby are in like an A-frame attic thing. Going yeah. On. Yeah. You, you didn't get my email, I guess then. Yeah. About the, uh, the A-frame attic. Uh, you got to have one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did it for a second there. I was like, wait a minute. What email? Um, yeah. Abby gets a lot of attention for that. Every guest is like, where are you? And I think of it like Eeyore's house. It looks like a place where it snows a lot. Yep. yep. That roof is meant to drop snow very easily. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, tie. So when you're putting on your shoes, do you tie your shoes every time or do you have them ready? Like, so you slip them on. I tie them every time. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. I, uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, I I, th I feel like I also don't tie my shoes right because like I have to do double knots all the time. I don't know if that's standard, but my shoes are always coming on tight unless I double knot it. And people have pointed it out to me. They're like, "Oh, you're doing it wrong," and I'm like, "Bro, I'm I'm 32 next week. I'm not fucking relearning how to tie my shoes. This is my way. Fuck you." Is there happy, a shoe near you where birthday. I can demonstrate this? Yeah, let me grab good. a shoe. Yeah. Can we push? Get, you can cut Let's some do it up. or you guys can yeah. fill it. <laughs> I need to see this. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> I have one right. I'd be like, <laughs> let me show you how I tie my shoes. This is uh, this first is time I'm here. So I go around, eh, like that. Boom. And then I make one loop. Then another loop, and then I just tie these. That's how I tie a shoe. Okay. Well, maybe I don't. I don't make two. Well, I think you kind of do it like, for lack of a better word, like classy. You do the two loops. I don't make two loops. Like I make one and then kind of wrap and pull. So, so you do the bunny ear thing, I guess, or whatever. I, I hardly. I I'm the the type of person that I tie my shoes. A little loose and they're i never untie them that's, and slip them that's on. the way to live I gotta, I gotta everyone who makes fun of you or gives you shit for tying your shoes I, i'm gonna i'm gonna back you up i think you tie them Thank just you. fine just it's, fine it's just oh, i think it's okay so i like push it through to get the second loop okay yeah, yeah so okay. i don't do that okay I do, I do i do like a very simple thing where it's just like you do like you know oh, the loops the and yeah. then you tie them oh that's so easy sorry i'm i yeah. am learning how to tie a shoe you may not want to but i do okay so i think i tie my shoes like a fucking kindergartner basically it's like this is i think i you know my i i think that this is the first way they teach you to tie your shoes before they teach you the real way and that's the just i never learned i never like a never kindergartner sunk in my head you real. double knot because you're rambunctious and yeah you're <laughs> Yeah, and I just, you know, I've, I never progressed past the, you know, kindergarten shoe technique. I mean, if, if it ain't broke, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, it is a little broke. That's why people are busting <laughs> my chops. Yeah. But first, uh, yeah, 
<laughs> no, I was going to say, who's paying that much attention to someone tying their fucking shoes, man? The people that I sometimes when I'm running with people or whatever, I, I run oh, yeah. with my neighbor. And he's always, you know, we always have to, I have to always have to stop and tie my shoes like once every two runs. And I'm like, bro, come on. Like, we'll catch our breath for a second. It's fine. Like, but yeah. Yeah. When's, so when's I, your birthday? Uh, it's next Wednesday. What's that date? July 13th. Oh, yeah. All right. If you could only see the world through a telescope or a microscope, what would you choose? Telescope. Fair enough. I, yeah, I think the, you know, the, uh, the world, like the, the world of microbes and all that stuff is really cool for sure. But I mean, how can you compare to the majesty of space? Yeah, I agree. I'd have to go telescope too. I also, I was curious where you would go with this. If you would go metaphorical, like, you know, you're looking at the world through a microscope where you're just picking things apart and overanalyzing versus, you know, the dreamer of space. So you kind of nailed it. You wanna, you yeah, I mean, in a metaphorical sense, yeah. I mean, I think you're just, you know, I think my brain works in the microscope way on certain things of just like, you know, details obsessed. But uh, I think uh, the more you can kind of, the more I can force myself to try and get some more perspective. It's uh, it certainly makes it better. Well said. And no segue. Do you remember your childhood phone number? Yes. Uh, and it's still my parents' number, so I probably shouldn't say it. Oh, don't say it. No, even if it wasn't, it, it was. It's probably someone else's. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I was just curious. Uh, live albums or studio albums? It depends on the band, but um, that's the correct answer. Yeah, I mean, like for like. I mean, the Who's one of my favorite bands, and I, I really don't think you can beat Live at Leeds. I love a bunch of their studio stuff too, of course, but you know, Live at Leeds is my go-to. Um, and like, especially if like you want to listen like James Brown or, um, yeah, there's a lot of live stuff that I just is just unstoppable. But in general, I mean, usually it's it's cool to to see what people can do in a studio. I don't know. I like, I like both, but like for like nasty, nasty rock and roll with like really good rhythm. I think that, you know, live albums really kick ass. If they're done right. Nailed it. Have you ever had a concussion? Not knowingly. No. Um, it could have, you know, I played one season of football when I was 11 years old and because of some technicality or like the league was full that I was applying for, they bumped me up into the next league. So I was playing instead of with like other 12 year olds, 13 year olds, I was playing with 16 year olds and I was um, annihilated. I was absolutely just like scattered, like, like sticks in the wind, every single play. And for the life of me, I still can't tell you how football works. I was like this, I was like this big and I was playing against these full grown country boys with murder in their eyes. And all I wanted was for that fucking game to end. And so, yeah, if, if I had, if I have received a concussion, it would have been from my time playing with the Wentworth Raiders for the <laughs> 2001 to 2000, 2001 season. I feel like I, I probably have one or two undiagnosed concussions. Yeah. Abby, yeah. have you ever had a concussion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, no. Everybody gets their bell rung once in a while, eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got a concussion and my first concussion and then stitches at the same time. Oh, damn. What mm -hmm. happened? I ran into a cinder block wall. <laughs> I was... Um, that will do it. <laughs> I, I was a kid I think I was in maybe first or second grade and uh my parents used to drop us off at like the YMCA or something during the summer so they didn't have to deal with us and I was racing this kid across a gym and like right as we're getting to the other side somebody like yelled my name on the other side of the gym I was like huh and just <laughs> knocked myself out 
Damn. Oh my goodness. Damn. I win. That's a, that's a also, one. the important part here is I still got to the wall first. You won. Yeah. <laughs> they, put the, they put the metal on your limp body. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what you say when you come to who won <laughs> yeah yeah did i make it it's the only question mm -hmm. if you had to draw if you were put on the spot to draw something what would be your first attempt skull okay yeah a good one. i mean it's just i've been doodling them since i was a little kid it's like a yeah. compulsion it's like in super bad where the guy can't stop drawing dicks like i can only draw like I, that's my <laughs> default setting is skull for sure from the side side perspective like oh really wow side skull that's that's a little different though that's cool are you gonna see the new elvis film yes when <laughs> i don't know i, I guess <laughs> like <laughs> so, like within the next few days i'd say um uh i i, I really do want to see it i mean like i know that the like the general like the general consensus is probably mixed when it comes to baz lerman but i i actually like his movies i think they're over the top and insane and like i i appreciate any movie that's like completely like one person's uh uncompromising vision of insanity i'll go see it like whatever he makes um and also just like i'm a huge elvis fan and um uh i like cheesy summer blockbuster movies in general love it well i abby saw top gun love like it. two days ago i saw it about a week ago loved it loved it um we were talking about the elvis film and Boz Lerman. you just you kind of took everything out of our mouths but um I don't know. It looks too pretty for me. That's you know, I, like, I think that's why, like, like if you if anybody other than Baz Luhrmann was doing it, then I'd be like, yo, fuck this, like, whatever. But because yeah. I just like, as an O tour, I guess they're called, like, I I I, I enjoy his general output. Like, I, I I watched his movies when I was a kid and they just like blew my mind because they're so visually insane. And so I've kind of stuck with him through all of it. Yeah. Like I uh I like the his his kind of like I don't know. I just like his style of of movies. Um there I don't think I don't think you can really say that anybody else's movies look like his movies and you're so. Uh, you're so you're so right and honestly also uh, that movie beat Top Gun in the box office and I know that it's skewed because of you know COVID and whatever but um that's mind-boggling to me because like well Top, Tom Top Cruise Gun is a is fucking shit. legend but you know Elvis is the king of rock and roll so indeed you know, it's tough competition I had to see Top Gun on the big screen. Elvis, I'm like, maybe I can wait. Maybe I can wait for the small screen on that one. Yeah, I I I hear you. That's I that my 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 friend Kyle, my best friend, uh drummer of our band, uh, he mm -hmm. said the same thing. Um I I wanna go and get my face ripped off by cheese uh at the uh, elvis movie at the the uh the theater I, you know i i watch a lot of stuff at home um you know but uh i, I just love going to the theater like i'll go love see it. movies i've already seen like we got a lot of good little local theaters around here or a few at least a handful of them that um will rerun like you know apocalypse now or whatever and i love going to see that all that stuff Anytime Back to the Future plays, I'll see it. Like, and that's my favorite of all time. Anytime yeah, I, it shows up somewhere, like on a some sort of anniversary or whatever, I'm like, whoop! I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I saw Lightyear too. That was real good. Was it good? Yeah, I loved it. I took my kid, and you know, uh, it, rightfully so, a couple of things went over her head, but it was it was awesome. It was great. Loads like of fun. I'm a, and, I love Pixar too. Oh yeah, can't beat Pixar. No, they rock. What's your favorite replacement song? Uh, I would probably have to go with um I don't know, it's always like a, for me it's a toss up always between like I really love Left of the Dial and I really love Bastards of Young. Like I just um 
you know, I've gotten, I've had my like extreme romances with other songs. Like I really love uh, like pre pretty much everything on Bl on Let It Be has been one of my favorite songs at some point. And I love Stink so much. And I love, uh, you know, Sorry Ma was, I would say that the demo version of Taken a Ride, uh, sorry, uh, Raised in the City. So there's this demo version on the extended edition of um of uh sorry ma forgot to take out the trash that was the first thing that they recorded like in their basement i'm pretty sure it's going back to the live album thing i think it's all of them just playing together in the room and it's fuzzy and fucked up sounding but it's so rock and roll like it sounds like um it sounds like country music on meth. It's amazing. Paul's voice sounds so good. And that was the demo tape that they gave to get like a manager and the manager heard and was had his mind blown like I did. But I it's it's a terrible, horrible recording and it might be my favorite replacements recording. Oh, I love it. it. It's It just suits their style so much. I don't know if other people might share that opinion with me, but I when I first heard it, I just couldn't stop listening to it. I loved it so much. And so, I mean, that's, but but my all-time favorite, I'm like Desert Island, like I, I probably got to go with like, yeah, Bastards of Young. That's if great. I'm being truthful, I could give you like yeah. a cooler, more obscure one, but that song I think has everything that I love about that band. We're, we're, that's one of our favorite bands. I went to see, or I I was in uh, Minneapolis in for work, and the the for, I was there for like ten days and very very busy. And like the first moment I had off, I was like, "All right, I'll see you guys later." And they're like, "Where are you going?" I was like, "I'm going to find this house." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I just and people live there, and it was like dusk too. I got on a Thursday, so I'm just standing in front of this snowy house taking photos, like a creep. And I was like, I had to do it. And the people I were with weren't like music geeks. Uh, so I looked even creepier. And Abby and I have uh, Can't Hardly Wait tattoos. So That's sick. Do you guys like the, the Can't Hardly Wait version on Tim? Have you heard that one? I'm sure I have. Can I distinguish it right now? Probably not. It's like, it's got Bob playing guitar on it. And it's like way more like ripping. Like it's it sounds more like Thin Lizzy or something because there's oh really playing all over it, and uh, they didn't put it on the album, but um, I don't know why, but uh, it's fucking amazing. It's really cool. I mean, like, yeah. Anyways, I, I could talk forever about the replacements, but yeah, I really like the um. Go go check that out if you're a huge fan of of Can't Hardly Wait. Go check out the the replacement, like the the Tim version of it tim version okay cool i have to i have a soft spot for treatment bound in my heart oh my that god just, what like, a great song yeah i fucking love that song so much talk about like horribly recorded but it's perfect for the song uh i put it in one of my i've published a few books and i specifically put that song in one of the books because i had to i love that song it's so good a lot of stuff on Hoot Nanny is really good. Like, um, yeah, within your reach is super cool. Um, and uh, um, color me impressed. I was gonna say, I think color, color me, me yeah. impressed was on that album, right? Yeah, the first what album song is androgynous on. Androgynous is on Let It Be. Okay. Yeah, Let It Be is insane. Like, there's only eight songs on it, and it's like. It's like, uh, I will dare, we're coming out, uh, Tommy gets his tonsils out, <sighs> uh, favorite thing, unsatisfied, androgynous, oh, that's a good one too. answering machine, and black diamond, and 16 blue, and senior video, so I guess there's 10, but it's like, it's an insane record, like every single song is, is really, really, really strong, even the Kiss cover is really good. I don't know that we've interviewed many people who could name multiple replacement songs, let alone an entire album in one go. Like top to bottom in order? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's pretty well, wild. I'm pretty big into the replacements. I'm borderline obsessed. I mean, it's, it's, oh. I've, uh, I've had a lot of favorite bands in my life, but none have lasted me uh as long as the replacements when so they play they played in in toronto their first 
concert in 22 years in 2013 and i was there and it was like honestly it was one of the best days of my entire life like the day the lineup was crazy it was like it was riot fest there was only one stage so the replacements headline first show in 22 years and then before them it was iggy pop and the stooges raw power lineup and raw power is one of my favorite albums of all time so they did wow all of raw power it's just like and there's Dinosaur Jr. And like, it's like all of my favorite guitar bands in one day. It was crazy. Rocket from the Crypt played and um, a bunch of our friends' bands played the show too. It was, it was just like, it was one of those, you know, never going to happen again, crazy, amazing days in my friend group. Oh, wow. I was jealous that I didn't get to play at the replacements, but they were. Fun. You haven't got a hug from Paul yet. I read no. some, you. Were, I read some interview in researching you doing deep dives where you were like trying to. You, you brought it up. We're like, I need to get a photo or a, a hug or something. You said. I, I would just like to. I mean, like, I don't want to bother the man, but like, if I ever did get a chance to exchange words with him i think that would uh make my my make my life complete i have got i did get to meet the who we played with the who and so that was very oh wow i mean pete townsend is my favorite guitar player of all time so i mean getting to talk to him was pretty sick i got to see roger daltrey play with uh, billy joel once how was that it was great it was uh billy joel's last play at shea stadium before they tore down shea stadium and mm -hmm. it was oh it was magnificent i love billy joel and uh he had so he had paul mccartney and roger daltrey garth brooks he had so many people come out and play with him wow um it was it was pretty wild that's crazy i didn't get a shirt say what i'm bummed i didn't get a shirt oh <laughs> well there's always ebay there is ebay Okay, so more music stuff. The Crow Mags or Turnstile? Turnstile. Okay, I, I that's where I figured you're gonna go. Do you delight in rule breaking? Of course. Who doesn't? <laughs> the one song just provided me with like six questions. <laughs> what kind of car does your mom drive? A Dodge Caravan. In fact, I I actually Still? have it in my possession. Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking falling apart though. It's starting to look like a vehicle out of Mad Max. Like all the um, all of the kind of like plastic exterior bits or a bunch of them have fallen off, and so um, yeah, it's it's looking pretty post apocalyptic. But people people give it a wide berth, so you don't know what's gonna fuck with it. It's I think it's the perfect vehicle. And do you have any Ikea furniture? Tons, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's uh, this desk that this computer's on, the shelves that are in the back, like it's brother, it's all Ikea. <laughs> I love it. So we, we noticed you're on Cameo. Yeah. Have you gotten any strange requests? A few weird ones of like, hey, can you ask this guy out for me and stuff? And I'm just like, oh wow. Well, I can give it the old college try, but uh, I think that I think that one's on you. Uh, but you get yeah, a result. We'll take your money, yeah, for sure. Did they follow up and be like, Derek said yes or whatever? I, I you know, I don't think so. I think you know, I started and they started messaging me over Cameo, you know, giving me updates on like how it was going. I'm like, cool, cool, cool. Well, if you want to talk about it anymore, it's going to be $50. But uh, um, I'm like, it's just, I'm, it's not my department. I'm sorry. I wish you well, but uh, transaction complete. It'd be, if it backfires, you're like, Derek broke my heart. <laughs> Luke, you, you didn't. You got to read right. the terms of service. <laughs> yeah. I'm not responsible. What's your favorite bubble gum? Uh, Hava Baba, for sure. Okay, is that what you're chewing right now? Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. And that's always on stage, too? You know, I haven't been doing it recently. I don't know why. I think it's just because, like, there's certain things that you forget when you've been off the road for a little bit. Or, uh, but um, I started taking, like, singing lessons just so that I, like, when, during the pandemic, because I was like, I might as well like try and get a little bit better at this thing. I've been doing it for a long time and uh, I want to be able to like be more confident in on the road and be able to like give it a little bit more. Um, 
I've never like I've only lost my voice like once or twice ever on tour in our whole time but i was like any kind it's such a horrible fucking feeling oh I'm you have bad. like a ton of dates and like no and you're just like you're fucking it up for everybody else that i really want to do everything that i can to prevent that from happening or minimizing its effect so i have started singing and when i started doing that for some reason like i just kind of got used to not doing the bubble gum but who knows i might might reincorporate it the other thing too was it was hard to find bubble gum at one point like the right stuff if you don't get the right stuff the right canadian hubba bubba then <laughs> um then the consistency is all fucked and like after you've made a bubble and it pops it kind of breaks apart onto your face and then you just have like bits of like bubble gum all over your face and then you get it on the microphone and it do you did when you were growing up in Canada? Did you have fruit stripes? I don't think we like what I remember was juicy fruit, big red, big winter red fresh, huge, huge. and uh, I'm missing one. Um, you got du- double mint, I guess. Yeah. And, um, oh yeah, the double mint twins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's like all I, I can remember the the yellow is juicy fruit uh light green was the packaging yeah it was double mint light double green was mint. double mint uh the white one with the dark green kind of uh accents to it was um another uh, like winter gr- or i can't remember yeah. what it's called but like and then there's the blue mint one which yeah, is winter you know, fresh. those are the four that i remember yeah and then you had like the weird shaped ones like chiclet and and trident and all that shit yeah 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 that's when gum started going south in my opinion like when they started moving towards the chiclet style gum make know? gum great again make uh. make gum great again that that's my only political platform uh no that uh, that's a cause that's that that's that's a cause i can get behind oh man that is uh, that is so dumb i regret saying that <laughs> i saw a guy when we were playing once in San Francisco and he had a black hat and it said, make Metallica great again. Oh, uh, that's adorable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, fruit stripe in the States was no, it was very sweet, but it lost flavor in, I don't know, like yes. seven seconds, like four chews. And that's, Gone. that's, that's Gone. It's now Gone. the, um, it's now in a ton of memes. Like, yeah. I don't know. I saw one that was like, mm-hmm. I've had, uh, or what, something about like it lasting longer than their relationship or something because it just has such a terrible reputation. Yeah. Yeah. It burns bright, mm-hmm. it burns bright, but it, it, it burns fast. Um, I need to get, I was on your, I was on the dirty nail site looking for a shirt. I was wanting to buy a shirt, but, uh, I want one that says fuck art on it. None of them say. Um, yeah. So, uh, did you go to press time, or sorry, cut, cut, cut loose, cut loose, rather not press time, cut loose. Okay. Is our kind of international distributor, um, but they oh, should cool. have some check stuff it out. left over from Fuck Art. Cool. All the listeners go to Cut Loose and buy shirts. So, Luke, um, shameless plug time. Do you follow us on Instagram? I do not, but I will now. Please do. All the listeners follow us on Instagram. Um, this is just our little gimmick we do to shame our guests into following us and also the listeners to take the time. That's why I'm talking slow, real petty shit. I am getting you right now. Bothering the band. Yeah, man. We follow you. Follow back. Oh, you already follow me. That's cool. All right. So there we go. We're big fans. We're big fans and uh, we're so thankful you made this happen. And I know you had to move some things around. So thank you for fitting us in. Oh, this my evening. Pleasure. <clears throat> um, Thanks for being flexible. So uh, this is a, a great, uh, one of the questions we'd like to ask everyone. Uh, if, if you could bother a musician live or dead, who would you bother? And what silly in the same vein as our dumb questions, what would you ask them? Hmm that's it's a fun one yeah i don't know i i probably would um 
um if i i could maybe i would bother bob dylan and i would ask him why don't you try anymore <clears throat> and he'll say because i don't have to yeah well i mean i'm sure you know i'm sure he's got it down because i'm a hundred years old luke yeah like apparently he's really good when he wants to be and like once in a while he gives a show that's like holy shit like but most of the time he's just like fucking around with a tiny chord organ or something and muttering but yeah. uh, i'm not i'm not trying to be disparaging but like i'm just saying that like i i think that he could probably play better when he wants to in fact there's a lot there's a consensus that he can but he just doesn't want to um that'd be one of them it's a good i would probably ask paul westerberg like what do you do with your time now like i i've heard i've heard that he paints and he just like is a shut-in basically and like bikes around to whole foods and then comes home and paints um let's try to get him on the pod yeah get paul on the pod apparently he's like basically retired from performing in public um that's what his manager said so we it'd be uh, a good one to get and then not ask him anything about like music just real practical stuff like what kind of bike when do you know how to change a bike tire yeah you know like at whole foods do you bring your own bag and shit like yeah yeah do you go organic or you just going right off the rack (laughs) like that'd be real fun you Uh, come guy yeah (laughs) he's like no i do the naked juice yeah (laughs) so dumb He'd probably he'd probably rather talk about that stuff than music, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. I'm I we we try to do that with this where we if there's something that's topical or uh, a guest is like just did something, we we try to steer away from that. If they're known for one thing, we're like, well, it's too on the nose. They're tired of asking it. Let's ask them, you know, how they tie their dumb shoes, you know. Yeah, the answer is incorrectly. <laughs> the answer is very uh, in my classy and gracefully. So I, I'm sticking up for you here. For real. thank you, think, thank you. I don't, I don't like I don't like bullies, and I feel like you're getting sh- like lace bullied. I'll give you my neighbor's number, and you can uh, you can uh, support me via text. What's what's your neighbor's name? First name. Don't give last name. His 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 first name is uh, Dan, and he's a lo- he's a lovely guy. He's he's actually the great. Dan's a big listener, so he'll he'll this will put him in. Yeah, his yeah. Place. Dan, my shoes are fine. <laughs> uh, Luke. Okay, what's what's next for for Luke? What's next for the band? Uh, this is the moment. Tell us what you're working on and and where to where to find you. Well, we've. Um, we're working on a, a lot of new music and um we're basically we're done making uh we have uh we have a record and so we're just kind of figuring out our situation and how we're going to get it out but uh yeah i'm super fucking pumped life is good the, the silo is full of grain and i can stand and admire it so i'm really enjoying oh, this wow. period right now that was beautiful <laughs> that was very poetic uh, do you have a cover? Do you have cover art in mind? Or are you going to crowdsource it again? Uh, yeah, we're still kind of organizing those details and stuff okay. together. But um, the uh, the music kicks ass, so I'm really happy. Well, I hope we can catch you because new album means tour, and so hopefully we can catch you on the flip. And everyone, uh, follow the Dirty Nil on all the socials. I, I think it's just the Dirty Nil, right? On yeah, all of them. It. Yeah yeah uh, and then your what's yours yours is uh, just your name right luke newcomb 90 luke newcomb <laughs> oh okay that's our show man thank you so much for doing this this has been incredible and in my you know music fan heart a long time coming so i can't thank you enough it was a pleasure chatting with you. I really enjoyed your questions. I didn't know what to expect. I saw when I saw the name of uh, of your of your podcast, I was like, "This should be interesting," and it very much so was. So, thank you for uh, for exceeding my expectations. And um, it was lovely to meet you, Ryan and Abby. Thank you very much for your time. And um, yeah, we'll uh, we will see you left of the dial, eh? <laughs> <laughs>